Hello, YouTube, and welcome to Behind the Wall, presented by Perky Jerky, the podcast where everything is made up and the views don't matter, just like Cody Coffin's trophy case. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, I'm Thermite 917, along with Junior Nation 5788 and Kane Junior 88, as always. Well, except for that time Middleburg wasn't here, hashtag scrub. <laughs> we have a great show planned, though. We're going to discuss the All-Star Weekend, present some awards, and make our fantasy picks for the Coca-Cola 600. Yeah, you, you know the deal by now. I don't have to go through it. Uh, anyway, the racing this week was uh, pretty up and down. Don't you guys agree? Yeah, I just want to say that the intro right there as a whole was first of all good, and it was more exciting than the fucking All-Star race. I just <laughs> dropped an F-bomb already because that's kind of how I feel about that particular event. It was not exciting, and n yeah, no, it was not terrific. Uh, the truck race was solid. The open was pretty damn cool. The race, the main event, disappointing. I have to agree. That was probably the most disappointing race I've ever watched. I mean, once you got out into the lead, you know, clean air was your best friend. And then for everybody else behind you, clean air was your worst enemy. Because you could not pass for the lead at all, unless it was on a restart. And that proved to be the case today for Kyle Larson, Jimmy Johnson, and then at the end, Kyle Busch. You know, I think the longest segment that were the, th uh, the first three, which were 20 laps apiece... The time, you know, the fuel run for Charlotte is probably what within the 40 to 50 lap range. So that's double, yeah. over double the run that what they experienced. And obviously, every time the stage ended, they came in and put four tires on it. Uh, so there wasn't really, honestly, a whole lot of strategy element. You thought with the softer tire, like that was one of the biggest things that, that stuck uh, stuck out to me. Before the All-Star even happened, I was thinking it was going to be interesting adding the new compound element. And I still think it can be if it's done in a different setting, uh, you know, perhaps even if they permanently introduce that as a thing, but we won't get into that as a topic. It still was cool that they decided to do that, but it just, it just didn't really matter, honestly, because like I said, they were always on fresh tires. There wasn't really much of a run. And the problem is a, a place like Charlotte, and realistically, it can be, happen anywhere. You know, once you get past the restart and it, everything settles in, that's just kind of the way it is. You know, there wasn't, you know, tire wear wasn't an element, honestly, unless you were one of those guys that tried two tires, that, you know, the handful of times it happened and it didn't work. Yeah, and, and it's just so weird that the showdown was so much better because they had all fresh tires too for the most part, except obviously Landon Castle at the end. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, with with the op the option tires or the, the green tires, I mean, it, it just, there wasn't enough time, or actually there, there was enough time because the tires kind of fell off after a few laps, but you just couldn't really go anywhere. You were either blocked in in the back or the leader was already gone by the time you got up there and stupid clean air again. And because uh, like you said, you can't really blame the track. It could probably happen everywhere or anywhere, but True. It, it's, it's just, it's frustrating because you know, it, with with Monster Energy being on board, you know, you kind of had high hopes because this is kind of like their race. They could do whatever they wanted. And uh, it just, it didn't quite work out. I mean, it was a good uh, format on paper, but I don't know. When you have everyone going the same speed and and all that, it just didn't quite go well. No, and I have a, something to add about the Open. You got to remember the Open was run uh, at around 6 o'clock. So yeah. there was sunlight still out. I think that could have played a factor in how the race was run, how the cars handled, and just how they were going after it. And obviously everybody in that race seemed a little bit more edgy. And you would think you'd see the same type of racing in the All-Star. And, exactly. you know, I, I'm not saying I'm not going to sit here and say these guys weren't running hard, okay? Because that would be stupid to say, honestly. But it just... It just seemed like it just seems like if you're look like looking at it on TV, it almost seems like the sense of urgency was like nothing. It you know, except for you know, you can make arguments to the first restart or well the restart and the, the start of stage three and obviously the last one with um, 
<clears throat> uh, dickless uh, making a three wide move <laughs> going in and one and uh, <laughs> but yeah that was about the only real sense of urgency I saw during that entire race I mean they were three wide three rows deep at the end of the first lap and you know that got my hopes up and then after that it just really strung out and there was not a single caution for an incident so yeah. I don't know because like you said you you'd think they would run you know, just as hard as the Open, because, I mean, they're going for a million dollars, they're going for an all-star win, but it's almost like, you know, with with the young guys combined with the slicker track, it just made for much better racing. Certainly did. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, they're, <laughs> I mean, I already feel what like we're at a, yeah, like we're, like we're just at a standstill. There really wasn't much to talk about. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could say Kyle made a good for the, move for the win. It makes me salty. I don't like son of a bitch so, Thick, slick, yeah. thicker, salty son of a bitch. Whatever that. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so I'm so damn pissed off of that race. I'm super happy that I saved my money and stayed home. I went to the truck race, and I was saying all week long, yeah, I'm gonna go to the All Star. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the All Star. Glad I didn't. I just I just didn't have a very good feeling when I woke up today. Maybe it's because I was tired from the fucking truck race, but I. Just was like, man, I just yeah. don't know that I want to go spend 30 bucks if, if, if that would have even been it. On a ticket, decided against it, super pumped. <laughs> I have that 30 yeah. bucks still in my wall, and I'm feeling great. So, um, glad I avoided it. And that's really mm -hmm. all I have to say about it. Uh, if you guys have something else to add, feel free. If not, let's go to ratings. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know... <laughs> <laughs> just uh i guess i guess thank you to both kyles because they were the only ones that really made the race exciting um you know like it or not kyle bush did deserve that win and then you know obviously the showdown i think a couple of awards will apply to that so we don't have to talk too much about it and then the truck race again kyle bush won <laughs> mm -hmm. that was uh, uh that was painful but yeah i mean he won every stage in that one and didn't yeah, really yeah, dominate least... there was there was good racing on restarts but he still won and that sucks <laughs> but at least nobody had their heart broken like Ben Rhodes did last week. Well, yeah, except, I mean, the fans. Ex except every young driver that's trying to make a name for themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. that's got a point there, yeah. Where, where'd their candy go? Someone took it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, not, not really nothing else to say about the racing this week. Um, no. No. Mm -mm. So... So ra right. ratings. Yeah, ratings. Uh, all, we're going to do the All-Star Showdown and the All-Star itself. I'll start off. Uh, the Showdown gets a 7.5 out of 10 for me. I Obviously, the one last year was going to be super tough to top. And, of course, it was not. But there was some, still some great racing, close pack, great saves, and, and just a lot of stuff that happened. It was pretty damn good. Unfortunately, um, you know what? I'll bump it up to an 8.5. What the hell's the matter with me? 8.5. Uh, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, a finish just could have been a little bit better. I think it really would have been had Eric Jones not pulled a, pulled a little slick maneuver there and put himself in the grass. Um, All-Star Race, 1 out of 10. It was fucking awful. <laughs> mm -hmm. It seriously was. <laughs> I mean, I, it just wasn't a good race tonight. It's plain and yeah. simple. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll give the showdown an 8.5 as well. I would almost give it a 9, but because there was no pass for the lead in the first few segments, I'll keep it at 8.5. Um, yeah, the all-star race, I'll probably give it like a five. You know, I'm a little more generous than that usually, but it did suck. You know, it was very disappointing for a race that was about entertainment. So, yeah, nothing else to say about that. <laughs> Kane? All right, for the showdown, I am going to give it uh, an eight, eight and a half. I mean, these guys proved, these young guys, they all proved today that this sport is in really good hands in the future. And yeah. you know what? Yep, absolutely. And then for the All Star race itself, I'm gonna give it a three. Uh, what can I say? It sucked. Yep, that's the I All Star. Mean, these guys, yeah, these guys are going for a million dollars with no points on the line. You think they go a lot harder than they did? But I, they didn't. I, I wish there would have been a little bit more smashing. That's why we need to go to yeah. fucking Martinsville. I think they all took it too seriously to save their stuff for that last segment because it's just the average finish that gets them there. So they didn't have to really run as hard as possible in the first couple. But I don't know. I don't know what you got to do to this format to make it exciting. 
it's been a question for years and years and years and granted they've thrown things at the wall trying to make it stick and not a lot has worked to be honest so uh, who knows what they'll come up with next year i don't i mean i i would say it can't be much much worse but to be honest with you it could <laughs> i mean it, it still could be year. worse it uh, could have been last year um, change the cars Ta! yeah no I splitter say, you know what? No splitter, no spoiler. Let's just see how it works. <laughs> <laughs> just, throw, yes. just throw them the you know, fuck out there. Jimmy Johnson and them, get on your bicycles, you know? <laughs> yeah. Start, yeah, first segment, we start at Martinsville. And then for the second segment, we go to Bristol. First hauler to Bristol gets a first pit stall selection. <laughs> That's a good that, that, that would be awesome. <laughs> that idea actually was posted by NASCAR memes on their Facebook page, so credit wow. to them. I'm all for yep. it. That's, yeah. that's hilarious, and I would approve. So, yep. but all right, <laughs> that's a damn all star. On to the 600. Well, the trucks raced again two weeks in a row, and obviously you know what that means. Where did Cody Coughlin finish? Oh, Cody Coughlin, that fucking real weird chum salad. He finished in 16th place, a very standard fare Cody Coughlin-like result after starting 17th. Let's see what he had to say. <clears throat> we almost accomplished our goal of the top 10 finish tonight. If that caution didn't come out with just a few laps to go, I think we could have done it. We fought a tight tundra all weekend. We were making strides, and I appreciate my entire Thor Sport racing team and all their hard work. I think with a couple more changes to our media program, we'll be where we need to be. Well, Cody, I got this for week. you. <laughs> yeah, Cody's been saying that all year long thus far. Cody. Listen to me. A couple of changes are not going to change anything, buddy. Even if you change your diet, you're still going to be fat. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh, Cody. You're, you're, um, no. Just stop, okay? You're going to keep finishing 15th, and we're going to keep making fun of you, okay? You, I wish you'd wreck, though. We'd, we'd have something more, fu you know, fun to make fun of you for. But we'll yeah, still he didn't do, do anything on that. No, he just, he was just there. Almost got, yeah. almost wrecked Austin Cindric a couple times. But that was cool, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, Jags. But anyway, Jags. Jags! <laughs> you never know when it's going to happen, but we always got to get it in there. We absolutely do. All right, that moving it. on to some awards. <laughs> First award, who's up? All right, that is the boner of the week, and it. It goes to a driver, but not a guy that, you know, is a NASCAR. It goes to Mr. Golf Cart Guy. <laughs> and <laughs> that, that's his name. He, during a showdown qualifying, you know, right at the beginning of the final round, he hopped in his golf cart, looked like, you know, maybe a security guard or something. He hopped in his golf cart, jumps onto the track, and goes down in turn one. Well, he, he's just, he's trying to, you know, get a lap in there. And, you know, I think he had the pole, you know, until they went that green. But, I mean, you know, the, the track safety guys chased him down. And, you know, he floored it, went through the grass and, you know, pulled off uh, kind of, you know, into the gravel by where the, the infield lights are. And <laughs> they gave him a good talking to. So, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. But that, that was uh, better than the All-Star race. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Next award. All right. Next award is our first of two badass saves award. And obviously the first one goes to... Hello, Newman. Hello, Newman. That was, that was a great save you made there in the uh, in all-star qualifying coming to pit road. I mean, I mean, I couldn't even do that in NASCAR Heat Evolution. But damn. Coming to, you're, you're trying to slow down, you're coming to pit road, you're like, oh, you're going to need four tires now, because those things are flat spotted, but damn, dude, the fact that you're able to keep that sucker off of the wall and still make it to pit road, I got to give you props, my man, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Kane. And for the second badass save of the week, it has to go to Trevor Bain for an insane maneuver in the All-Star Open. I believe that happened in, what, the first round of the race? Danica Patrick obviously just didn't want him in front of her, uh, in front of her no more. And uh, gave him a little boot shoot in three and four. And, man, he wishy-washy that son of a bitch three or four times, maybe more than that. And, I mean, 
it, it should have ended up in a wall, but he just wheeled that motherfucker, and that was unbelievable. Massive respect points for, for that, Trevor Bain. You get a you get a boost there, you know. Still finished, you know, thirteenth or whatever the hell, you know, you know that rash power, but uh, <laughs> great save, man. Badass. <laughs> Next award. All right, our next award for the second week in a row, Eric Jones gets drumroll, please. <laughs> the Straight Jacket Award! Because you must be freaking crazy if you think you can make a pass in the grass just like in 1987 with a damn splitter on the car that's practically sucked to the ground. You realize when you go to the grass, you, did you not learn from Dale Jr. in 2014 at Texas Motor Speedway that if you drag the splitter through the grass going through the quad oval, it's going to tear the front of the whole car apart? What were you thinking, Eric? <laughs> Kane, you just do so much raw power and emotion. That's why I love you. Yeah, with a sudden stop at uh, the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, and next award goes to me. Nice. Um, that is the Cigar Award, and that is for Christopher Bell, who, man, I feel so bad for him. He got the pole in the truck race, and on lap three, he cut a tire and almost wrecked that car. He, you know, pulled the Trevor Bain like you, know, you saw in the showdown, and, uh, man, that, I thought his race was about over. He had to slow way up, um, to not tear the thing up and get in pit road. There was no caution. Took forever to get the lucky dog, but he finally did, and then was basically part of the show again. And he came all the way back to finish third, with a shot at the win, I believe. So great job to that guy. He's a he's really fun to watch, and you know, he probably could have won the thing, but obviously stupid ass Kyle Busch had to do that. <laughs> so, but good job, Christopher Bell. Next award. Oh, next award. Oh, oh, you thought. We were going to have a paint scheme segment on this. Mm-mm. No. We have a crying towel. And it's going to the Hendrick Design Team. <laughs> the tears are going to have to be mopped up this week because this fucking car is so terrible. Look at this piece of shit. Come on, Mountain Dew. What the hell are you guys doing? I don't know if this is a combination of your design team and Hendrix's design team, but it's the crying towel! It goes to all of you! All of you sons of bitches! What is this shit? First of all, you changed your logo. It looks like ass. If it, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You ever heard that cliche term before? Well, fucking imprint it into your goddamn brain! Oh my goodness! Look at this! Just weird shapes all over the place. These Mountain Dew crystals, like they just, they, they don't even belong. There's no flow. God. <laughs> There's no flow. There's no flow. Like the progressive lady. She has more flow. <laughs> God damn it. Her name's Flow. God. Look, this is just terrible. Get, get your ficuses out here right now. I, I had a lot of Mountain Dew, <laughs> and I've got to piss all over them. And I need somewhere to go. You fucking, that's it. Your bikes is getting destroyed. Give up your careers as graphic designers, you pieces of shit. And terrible A post, by the way. God damn, whose idea brilliant was that? You make, you just make me so fucking sad. Why do you do this to me? Mountain Dew creates such great paint schemes over the years. I mean, look at Junior's USA car. That ran, ran last week. And now you come back with this shit and you copied and pasted it on Casey's card. <laughs> Jail you bunch of crybabies! Look what you're doing to me! I'm a crybaby now! I'm a fucking crybaby! Give me huggers! Huggies, pampers, pull up because I'm a big crybaby! You fuckers! You do this to me! <laughs> Change your shit, please! I can't take it anymore! Fuck you, you get to cry now, you assholes. Uh, Terrible ass paint <laughs> schemes. I'm serious, if I ever see any of you in person, I'm personally dropping my fucking pants, taking my dick and putting it in my hands, I'm pissing on your ficus. <laughs> and on you too! <laughs> Alright, well, no best paint schemes for the week, you know, I think we, uh, I did enough right there, destroying the Mountain Dew car, so we'll leave it at that. And we'll uh, probably have the best paint schemes of the week. 
back for the Coca Cola Six Hundred. There's gonna be plenty of great cars running, so I'll be looking forward to that. And uh, we're gonna recap the fantasy now. Um, Kane comes home with the win. He picked Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch pipped everybody at the end for the last segment and got stole the win really. Uh, Kyle Larson. I picked Kyle Larson. I thought he was gonna win. He looked cherry, winning two of the segments, won the pole. It looked like everything was going his way. And uh, they had a bad last pit stop, he, but he ended up coming home in second. Damani comes home in third, picking Joey Logano, who came home, I believe, eighth. And, well, <laughs> what do you know? Who's last? We don't care about that guy. Uh, <laughs> Nick <laughs> sucks to suck again. So, God. but Kane, Kane wins the... Well, he wins, period, so he gets to 10 points plus... He gets uh, the bonus points because Kyle ended up winning the race. So Kane gets 20 free bonus points just to add to his total. Um, we all get nothing. So that's cool. Anyways, we're going to make our picks for the Coca-Cola 600. And we're also going to do like a Memorial Day challenge patterned after our old NTG forums, rest in peace, challenge that was on there for a fantasy game where we all take turns picking a winner for each of the three big races on Memorial Day, the Monaco Grand Prix, the Indianapolis 500, and the Coca-Cola 600. So if uh, whoever comes out on top points-wise for the those three events will get an extra 10 bonus points to add to their total. So Nick, since uh, you, know, you continue sucking and finish last, you will pick first. Go ahead. All right. Should I pick all three at once? All three at once, please. Okay. So, I'll start with Cup, and I'm still kind of going back and forth on this, but I think I'm going to go with Kevin Harvick. Um, always solid at Charlotte. I think he'll be, you know, one of the best on the, the long runs or in a long race, whatever. Um, and I, I'm just looking for a solid run this time. I, I'm tired of cursing all my picks. I just, top five, something, just come on. <laughs> so, yeah, Kevin Harvick for Cup, and then... For F1 at Monaco, I am going to go with Sebastian Vettel. Um, that's probably more just because I want Ferrari to win over Mercedes. <laughs> and then for Indy, probably another one just because I want him to win, is uh, Joseph Newgarden. That would be awesome to see. You know, the, the American take it home. So, yeah, it should be an awesome weekend of racing yet again. So, there you go. Now we're screwed Damani for the umpteenth time, so his picks will have to be dropped and added to uh, after the show, so you'll see them here. And uh, I'm going to pick, I'll start with Cup. Uh, well, I think Martin Truex Jr. will get it done. I still think he's got a lot of you know momentum. They were so strong. Last year, you know, completely delivering the ass kicking we talked about. It's what? Go, go. Hey, go. You're not getting away this time, mister. Unless you want that ass kicking we talked about. <laughs> Wash. <laughs> and uh, it just seems fitting. I know he had not so great of an all star. That doesn't matter. They're going to come back and kick some ass. Monaco Grand Prix, I believe. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna take Valtteri Bottas. I just think, uh, you know, he can, he'll come back. You know, he's gonna be starting with a fresh engine because that's how things work in F1. You have a certain allotment of engines. He blew his up, blew up, so he's gonna start with a fresh one, and I think that'll work into his favor. And I think he will get his second career Grand Prix victory for Indianapolis. I fucking love this guy in F1, and I'm going to take him. I don't care what happens. Fernando Alonso. Fernando Alonso <laughs> wins the Indianapolis 500. I knew you were going to do that. Yes. You're taking and papaya jambalaya. <laughs> I am taking him. I, I really, really, really hope he wins. Him and Kimi Raikkonen are my two favorite F1 drivers, and I really hope the best for him. He obviously has a hell of a lot better shot at doing well in this Indy, uh, in the Indy car than he does in Formula 1, so uh, he's absolutely gone off on McLaren. So, and he super excited. He was very fast, and I think, I just really think he has a shot. Andretti Autosport is pretty strong in Indy, and typically on ovals as well. So, they're going to come in, you know, they, they yeah, they're going to come in with some pep and some real power. So, uh, yep, Fernando Alonso gets it done in his first Indianapolis track. Kane, who are you picking? All right. 
for Cup, I'm going with Kyle Larson. He, let's be real, he should have won tonight, but he had a bad pit stop, got screwed. But uh, you know what? I mean, it's Memorial Day weekend, and, and Ganassi is one of the biggest weekends, obviously, not just for racing, but obviously for Chip Ganassi because he's got Indy and he's got Charlotte. So for Cup, Kyle Larson. For Monaco, I think I'm going to go with uh, Smiley Boy himself, Daniel Ricardo. He almost won last year. He just couldn't get around Lewis there at the end after a really bad pit stop. Hopefully they turn that look around. Ass bull. Ass bull, yeah. <laughs> and then for Indy, I am going with Ricky Boobies, Arch Nemesis, <laughs> Monsieur Jean Girard, a.k.a. Simon Pagano. Obviously, oh Pesky has always been strong at Indy, so... And let's face it, Simon Pagano, he looks just like John Gerard, and he talks like him, too. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I don't care if this is off the grid or not. I shit you not. I mentioned that to my buddy last night uh, while we were chilling after the truck race. I said, man, that fucking Simon Pagano, he looks like that John Gerard. And he, and like, he talks like the John Gerard, and he might... I, I don't know if... Like, every time I look at him, like I just think he's, like, gonna, like... Like, have some world-class, you know, horses who are also gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, so he, I mean, he, he, he talks like he has, you yes. know, peanut butter. He's like a dog with peanut butter on the roof of his yes. mouth. I know. He, <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then he's going to break your arm over a pool table because you didn't say, I no. love Clex. Prepare to get tasered. <laughs> oh, my Say hello God. to Dr. Watts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this could go on all night. Oh, I that, know. Was, that was great. I'm so glad you said that. That was a great coincidence. So, yep. well, all right, man, that, uh, that sums up the podcast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully a shorter rendition. So that shitty, that's all-star race. Uh, <laughs> so for KJunior88, for Thurmite917, for the awful designers that are going to have their ficuses pissed all over, I'm Junior Nation 5788 and this has been Behind the Wall, presented by Perky Jerky. You've been behind the wall. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Hey, he's here. God hey, it, finally. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't realize Zach was that much more important than us. Yes, he's so much more important. I don't talk to him very often as much as you think, so that's the only reason why. Well, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but Mountain Dew, that, I... that... Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have no, just I'm, as much to say about this as Tyler does, okay? <laughs> I'm all amped up about it, too. But, I mean, you know, Mountain Dew, that was a Mountain Don't. Chase Elliott. <laughs> Mountain don't. <laughs> Stay with you, Casey. That was good. And you that better was... not do this to Junior, too, because he doesn't deserve this in his last season. <laughs> it's already so bad. Just fucking just make him run it. Yeah. <laughs> How can it get any worse? Don't make me cry again, King. <laughs> it, it, made, it made me want to cry, too. So. Made me, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Who, who oh. didn't want to cry from that? Don't you cry, I'll cry with you. <laughs> you're not alone. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> no, you better cry with me, because it was that sad. Gotta, gotta play the Aerosmith song. That's not Aerosmith, that's Van Halen. <laughs> oh, that is Van Halen. God damn it. See, I'm so upset I can't even remember songs. Uh, I was, I was crying I when I... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was crying yeah. when I met that paint scheme. Now I'm dying <laughs> to forget that paint scheme. <laughs> that's good. That's pretty uh. good. I have come to defeat Willpower. This is a really, really important race, and I think I can defeat him. I come from Formula, and uh, this is the, a big series in Europe, and I think Willpower is beatable. But uh, 
most and foremost, I think willpower should say like scraps. 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 I am not second. I am first. Okay. Um, Don't you laugh? No, sorry. Why would you laugh? Sorry. Ricky Bobby is here? I want, there's a rumor going around he might want to get in the field. Did you hear I broke his arm? I mean, he heard you were running in this and he wants to run against you, I think. Pretty sure he's very scared. Really? But this is good. I want to fight with Ricky Bobby.